this is You Need to Know. On this episode, we'll be talking to the CEO and co-founder of Mars Farm, Peter Webb. So Peter, welcome. Thank you. Tell us all about Mars Farm. So at Mars Farm, we're all about creating environments. We create environments for schools to teach kids about STEM-related project-based learning. So what we do is build a controlled environment growth chamber. Yeah. And that just means a box that grows plants based on a computer. And that computer, it has sensors that monitor the environment and then react accordingly. So we can control temperature, humidity, CO2, pH, all these different parameters that impact how the plant grows. And then use our curriculum to teach kids about how that influences their food system, how that has implications to sustainability, and also how these tools can be leveraged to grow plants on Mars. That's crazy. Plants on Mars, that's the ultimate goal. What that's is your goal? So, Mars is a great metaphor for discussing an environment that we know very little bit about. Um, I, I think it's very easy to take a lot of things for granted in our environment. For example, we put compost on plants, and that actually is a very sophisticated system of microorganisms that turn that compost into nitrogen that the plant can eat. So by thinking about an environment where you don't have all of that yeah. and you take all that away, you're forced to ask some really fundamental basic questions mm. about what's truly needed to produce food in a sustainable way. So it's a great platform to educate from and, and really ask the students, okay, you just landed on Mars, you have to produce food to stay alive. How do you do that? What do you need to take with you? What recipe are you gonna use to grow the best food? And then how nutritious is that? Is it still taste good? Hmm. So many questions that then come from that and that's where we really wanna enable the students to be explorers and really learn with us as a company. Because yes, our end goal is to grow plants on Mars. But we see that to be a very long road um, and so we know that in the process we're going to have to do a lot of work on Earth and there's a lot mm -hmm. of takeaways and mm -hmm. ways that this can also, our research can benefit the Earth as well. Truly, I mean if you know how to grow a plant that's tastier, mm -hmm. <laughs> that could work well for me. <laughs> no, absolutely. I think uh, you're, you're absolutely right. I love strawberries personally and they're kind of like a difficult crop. Um, but one that you can play with a lot. And I mean, who doesn't love a sweet strawberry that like they just picked? And that's, that's an experience that it's really hard to get from a supermarket in the middle of winter. So no. I, I think you can influence yeah. a kid's diet quite a bit by if they grew that plant and then consumed it, they're just way more likely to want to eat that on a more recurring basis. And also that will influence their family's diet as well if they're taking it home. Mm -hmm. So like, what's your programming like? Students come to your facility and learn how to, you know, create a hypothesis or learn how yeah. to like grow a strawberry? What's, so we what's that look like? So we provide a kit. And our kit is the components needed to build what I described earlier of a, a controlled environment growth chamber. So it's about this big, right? And mm -hmm. it's got lights in it, it's got fans, mm -hmm. it's got a reservoir for the nutrients and the plants that then go in that. And so we provide this kit to a school, and then the school then follows a set curriculum that helps the students to identify scientific questions that they want to answer. So for example, what would happen if I used more blue light than red light, right? Or I, I, instead of having 12 hours of light and 12 hours off, what if I did two hours on, two hours off, two hours on, two hours off? Mm -hmm. This is the kind of questions that, I mean, really, uh, on the International Space Station, for example, there's no thermo period. It means it doesn't get colder at night. Okay. That's something plants just are so used to. Mm -hmm. And when you take that away, it influences how they grow. Huh. So you really have to think about, again, going back to a clean slate, what's everything the Earth does normally? And is that really the best system for growing plants? Or are there other tweaks we can do that have good implications? Um, on, on the outcome. Right, right. So you have these kits uh, at your facility? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, I'm like, sorry, no. Yeah, so, walk me through, like, yeah. like what, so uh, in a, in a school, if I brought my kid to your... Yeah, unfortunately, you would uh, not, <laughs> you'd be bringing them to my apartment. Oh, <laughs> right okay. In my, uh, so my co-founder's garage. Yeah. We, are, we are young. And the way we've gotten our foothold, though, already in schools, though, 
is we provided open source documentation mm -hmm. of our product. Yeah. And, and just to, to back up, open source really means uh, it comes from software and it means that all of our software is free to anyone who wants to use it. Mm -hmm. And all of our, our list of materials, all the parts used, that's all publicly accessible too. Yeah. So hundreds of people all around the world have gone and built our kit okay. based on what we told them to go order from Amazon and the hardware store. Okay. They built this kit and then run our software on it okay and then that is now enabled us to be already in uh for example fox high school in arnold mm -hmm. they have 10 of these food computers there because they were able to go access this for free and do so, they share the data with you so yes that's where we are kind of the aggregator um and collector of the data and and that's what's guiding now our decisions in terms of what curriculum we want to develop. Do we want to do strawberries or basil? Mm -hmm. How do we want to focus the learning? Right. Um, but to be quite frank, we would never as a young company been able to get to there if we hadn't taken the open source approach to really validate what's this student really taking away from this experience? What's the value to the teacher? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, there's a lot of things that we've learned by being open and transparent early on that if we had gone and sought out a patent, um, we would never have had that opportunity. We'd still be working on our computers, on designs. We wouldn't be talking <laughs> to students who've used our boxes. That's crazy. What's the response you've gotten from the people who has overwhelming used your computer, like, your, I, your program? It's, it's genuinely your overwhelming and, and it's so cool. Like there's, there's nothing cooler than to, uh, we have, we use forums um, online mm -hmm. and every week at least, I'll see all these pictures of somebody who I've never met, never heard of, and it's them and eight students building this thing that, I mean, we designed a year ago and had no idea where that was gonna go. Mm -hmm. So every time that happens, it's just like a great, feels good. Mm -hmm. um, and it really helps our team to get motivated about how can we now take this to the next level and provide kits that aren't just a hodgepodge of materials ordered from different places, but are really, they snap together, they're all intended, it's, it's a more intentional design. Easier to and, put and together, And that's gonna yeah. make it more accessible to, I think, um, less fortunate schools as well as younger grades. Mm -hmm. Mostly it's been high school and older at this point, but we really see the opportunity as far down as elementary school. That's cool. Yeah, and that's, that's again, I think, what, what drives us is that we can continually try and get better and better. Um, and, and the students are always going to be evolving as well, right? Yeah. These things are so natural to them. It's not weird to grow a plant using LED lights, whereas to my grandma, that seems a little off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but students are, are, they don't question a lot of the, the parts of it. Um, and they really, I think, latch on to the whole space explorer mentality that we try and illustrate. Uh, and I think it, it's opening their eyes to the, the food system, which is something I think we all need to be a little bit more aware of. Okay. So, like, it sounds like you have this, um, this product, mm -hmm. right? And you call it a kit. Yes. Right? And the kit enables an individual or a classroom to test their own personal hypothesis on the plant growing environment. Absolutely. Right? And then they take that data and they share it with you and they contribute to like the whole understanding of plants. Yes. And okay? they are now part of the community in terms of Via that they form. can talk to another school uh -huh. who maybe did a similar experiment but got a different result. Uh -huh. Or grew a slightly different variety of lettuce, still lettuce, but a different, you know, species. Yeah. Maybe it reacted differently to the high humidity. That's a discovery, in my opinion. Right. That maybe we should grow that lettuce in areas that have higher humidity. Right. Um, so it's, it's those kinds of cross learnings that I could never facilitate and only really happen through this kind of an open platform. No, I couldn't really see this taken off. Because, like, you know how in public schools, in order to engage the children, we, we use competition mm -hmm. right so we have like the science fair but what if like there was the mars farm mars farm competition like five classrooms yep. in each grade level will be competing to see whose strawberries were the sweetest and have a panel Absolutely. you know and that is the year of the strawberry and everyone's growing strawberries and then year data is developed further and the students they have to if they want to be competitive already understand some kind of 
basis of what is normal and important to a strawberry plant and what maybe would be the best yeah. hypothesis to run with to, to test uh, if that will make their strawberry better. No, you, you right? just described it perfectly. Oh, um, that's fantastic. I, I love what 4-H did uh, back for agriculture. And Tell me what 4-H did. I'm, so, I'm very yeah. uh, green. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I understand. No, so, so 4-H, I mean, if you think the classic, uh, the biggest pig gets the blue ribbon, right? Okay. So all the kids, you know, grow their pigs <laughs> and bring them to the state <laughs> fair and compete. Well, okay, how do we do that with strawberries? And, and you just described it. Um, and it, it's how do we enable that learning without um, really even the physical presence in some ways. I think that's where we can really make leaps and bounds to how can a kid from South St. Louis collaborate with someone in South Korea, mm -hmm. right? Because that's where we really start to understand true biodiversity. Yeah. And they know how to grow rice and I know how to grow strawberries. Let's share recipes, mm -hmm. right? And if, if we as the facilitator of this exchange can help them provide the really the only physical component is the seed itself yeah um, once you have that though it becomes very easy to exchange learnings and and I think we'll see a, a great proliferation of biodiversity all around just through this exchange now okay so you just said uh, seeds and Missouri we're our industry is a lot of ag mm -hmm. companies. You know, we, I know down in the Boot Hill area of Missouri, there's um, a lot of farms that um, have their own like little organic seeds, yeah. right? And uh, we grow a lot of corn here, yeah. right? It's actually, a lot of rice in Missouri too. No, I didn't know I that. Could you not? I could uh, you not? Down in the Boot Hill specifically. I, well, I know like random. corn. <laughs> corn is in our oil, yes. which is a big deal for my dad. He's like, oh, don't get that corn ethanol and oil. Corn soybeans are the big, you know, commodities. Uh, commodity agriculture. And it's right here in Missouri, and we don't yes. think about that often because you know we don't think about what goes into making our gas for yes. our cars. Um, but then also we all know about like um, Monsanto, mm -hmm. which is now Bayer, and mm -hmm. they do the genetically modified seeds and mm -hmm. they have the, the, the Roundup that kind of mm -hmm. like helps control weeds and stuff like that. So in your industry, or in, in your, you're in the same industry, but in, in your, from your purview, like when you talk about seeds, is, the integrity, is there a certain type of integrity that you try to hold to before you test a seed? Yeah. Are you testing any seeds, like the genetically modified ones and also like the heirloom ones? Yeah, so I, we try and be seed agnostic, meaning right now it's been uh, really the, the schools who have wanted to influence a lot of what they grew. Mm -hmm. So they've kind of come to the project with an idea already of yeah. what they wanted to use the box for. Okay. Um, going forward, I, I do believe that we'll try and use, um, there's a, a array of seeds that have been tested to actually be grown on the International Space Station. Nice. And they're open, um, you know, there's no proprietary licenses around them. Yeah. And so you, you can access those. And I think that's a safe area for us to kind of work in. Okay. That being said, um, uh, a box doesn't care if it's a GMO or if it's mm -hmm. heirloom organic seed. Uh, I, I will say though, from a, a regional point of view, it is huge what we have in St. Louis. Um, we have the largest concentration of plant scientists of anywhere in the entire world. Really? Yes. World, Any, not just the United world. States. Anywhere in the entire world. We are the plant scientist mm -hmm. hub of the world. Crazy. In St. Louis. and and. From a nonprofit at Dan Ford, mm -hmm. as well as Bayer Crop Sciences, Monsanto. My dad was a data architect at Monsanto. So, full transparency, I, I am like, I have a lot of respect um, for, for what they do. And, and I really think that what can happen in the St. Louis region is a, a pipeline of talent continue to be fostered mm -hmm. to help feed some of those plant science ag tech companies here um, and, and working, you know. With students to really get it understanding that wow these stem skills technology all these cool things with coding computer science that can apply to agriculture yeah right? that, yeah. that's eye-opening to a student that I can be a farmer and also a computer scientist right that cross industry mm -hmm. you know, inter interdisciplinary critical. kind of it's critical yeah um, for I mean that's what a lot of farming I think it will require different skills 
than mm -hmm. it does right now. Multiple skills, not just one or two, but it you always have to, has. Yeah. You, know, you used to be the mechanic, and you used to you know you fixed the tractor too. You didn't mm -hmm. just use it. Um, but the average age of a farmer is 59 years old in the United States. So yeah. mm -mm. there's a lot changing. They got one more decade left in them. Yeah. Come on, kids, we need more farmers. Yeah. So we do. how can we get this lovely program, this like this program that was going to push industry for not only agriculture, mm -hmm. but also for technology and computer sciences. Um, yeah. What can we do to get this into more schools? What have you done so far and what would, you know, I don't know, what's so, your handle, what's your website? Yeah, yeah. So um, we're on a number of social media platforms at Get Mars Farm. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just look us up on Facebook. Uh, I'm sure we'll include links in this video as well. Uh, from a what do we need point of view, mm -hmm. um, to be very open, we, we are looking for investment. We are looking for mentoring. Yeah. Um, partners who, who can help us get into schools. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, educational organizations already out there who have those relationships. So we can focus more on providing the kits yeah. and building this back end mm -hmm. um, and, and let them deal with a lot of the day-to-day -day getting it into the classrooms. Uh, in addition to all of that, we are still supporting the open source side of our product. Yeah. Um, and so you could go out today and, and find our bill of materials, build the box, yeah. and we'd love to see pictures and hear from you. That's what's so, up, that's what's yeah. up. So like, if you can help get this into the schools, reach out to Mars Farms. You can find all their social media st stuff online. Or you can donate, yeah. right? Well, invest. Uh, invest. Yeah. <laughs> or we can um, get the kit, make it yourself, and contribute to the forum of collective data science. Right? Absolutely. OK, awesome. <laughs> well, it was wonderful getting to know you today and well. interviewing you. and. Um, I think your business is really cool, so I wish you the best of luck on that. Thank and you very much. Uh, maybe like we can work together in the near future. Absolutely. We're, we're always learning and excited to keep learning with the students. Yay. Awesome. Thank you.